Hello everyone, AJ Ryzik here. As many of you know, GNOME Shell is my preferred desktop environment and has been so for a long time. Because of some of the recent announcements, Ubuntu moving to GNOME Shell, Solus releasing a GNOME Shell ISO, I've had several requests to do a GNOME Shell tutorial. Specifically, how to most efficiently use the shell. Before we get started, let me say this up front. Gnome Shell is not a traditional desktop, and if you try to use it as one, you will not be very efficient. Yes, you can add various extensions to force it to function as a traditional desktop, and this is what many people do. But out of the box, Gnome Shell will require more movements of the cursor and more mouse clicks than other Linux desktops. Now these extra clicks, mouse movements, they're because Gnome Shell is meant to be keyboard driven. From a functionality and usability standpoint, this is highly efficient. On the downside, it will take time to learn to use a desktop from a keyboard centric perspective, essentially forcing the user to give up previously learned habits. Let's face it, for anyone my age and older, that's 30 plus years of habits that need to be wiped out. Not necessarily an easy task. So let's start by taking a quick walkthrough of the GNOME Shell interface. I'm running GNOME Shell 3.24 on Solus, so you may find some minor differences if you're using another version of GNOME Shell. I'll also turn off all of my extensions so that you'll be able to see the way a pure GNOME Shell looks, feels, operates, that sort of thing. Starting with the upper left hand corner, we have the Activities button. Clicking it with the mouse gives us the Activities Overview. You can also press the Windows or Super key or just dragging your cursor to that upper left hand corner will also launch the Activities Overview. I'll talk more about the Overview in just a second. In the middle of the top panel, we have our clock and by clicking it we reveal our calendar, notifications, weather, and any world clocks that you have configured. You can also activate this uh, viewing mode by pressing the super plus V keys. At the far right of the top panel we find our system tray. This displays indicators for network management, volume control, logout, login, and so on. Let's get back to the activities overview. On the left hand side you will see the dash which, dis which displays our favorite applications, the running applications which are those applications that are underlined, and then the grid button on the bottom is to launch the applications overview. You can also get to the applications overview by pressing the super plus A keys, more on this in just a second. In the upper center of the display is a search bar. There is no need to use your mouse to click in the search. Simply start typing and the, the text will appear in the search bar. To the right of the display is our workspaces. If you're coming from a Windows environment, it's likely you're unfamiliar with workspaces, although Microsoft did add something similar in Windows 10. Think of a workspace as a virtual display allowing you to simulate multiple monitors and giving you the ability to switch between them. Gnome Shell uses dynamic workspaces, meaning the system will create additional workspaces as they are needed. In the center of this display, we see all of the currently running applications. If we switch to the applications overview by pressing the grid button on the dash or the super plus A key, we will see an overview of applications with a selection at the bottom of the screen to either show all applications or just the frequently used ones. Much like the activities overview, we have the search bar at the top. You can either browse through the applications with your mouse or use the keyboard to search for the application you need. You'll notice a vertical row of white dots to the right. These indicate the pages of applications in your overview. To page through them, you can either use the mouse to click on one of the dots or use the page up, page down buttons to scroll. You may have noticed a pattern with what I have shown this far. Uh, everything can be controlled through the keyboard. This isn't by accident. As I said earlier, GNOME Shell was developed from the ground up for a keyboard centric workflow. So let's get started working with our desktop and doing so efficiently. To launch an application, we'll hit the Windows or Super key. Since I know what I want to launch, I have no need to see the application icons. I'll just type the name of the application I want to use. 
As an example, I'll fire up the gedit text editor by typing gedit in the search bar. And as you can see, by the time I have put in the first two letters, the search function has already found gedit, and I can hit enter to launch the program. In the off chance I don't remember the name of the app I want, maybe it's something that I don't use very often, I can hit the super plus A keys giving me the application's overview. From here, I can use a combination of page up, page down, and or the arrow keys to scroll through the available applications, then hitting enter to run the selected app. So let's open a few more applications so I can demonstrate how to switch between apps. LibreOffice Writer, Gnote, Firefox, uh, let's see. Now when I launch Firefox, I'm going to open additional instances of Firefox by by pressing control plus enter and you'll see why I did this in a minute. Now in a traditional desktop environment there is some sort of indicator, uh, icon, app description, something in the panel showing all of the running ap applications. Switching from one app to another meant using your mouse to move the cursor to the panel, selecting the desired application, clicking it. With GNOME Shell we have no indication in the panel. The assumption is that you're only doing one thing at a time, so there's no need for an indicator to clutter up the panel. But what about switching to a different application? Press and hold down the super key while hitting the tab key. A pop-up will appear which shows all of the running applications with the current uh, in-use application being highlighted. To switch to another application, simply hit the tab repeatedly until you reach the desired app, then press enter. If you hit the tilde key, which is that squiggly little line above the tab and next to the one key, you can get a preview of the selected application. You'll notice that Firefox has a small arrow underneath it. That's because there are multiple instances of Firefox running. Use the down arrow key to maneuver through these instances, then press the enter key to go to that app. Instead of the super plus tab keys, you could just hit the super key giving you the activities overview. From here, you can once again use the tab key to scroll through the running applications, clicking enter once you've reached the desired application. Now, you may be wondering about switching tabs in browser programs like Firefox. Most browsers do support the shortcut keys control plus shift plus tab to switch tabs, so that is certainly an option. However, an alternate method is to open new instances of the browser rather than new tabs. This allows you to scroll through the browser windows using uh, the uh, activities overlay and uh, the uh, super plus tab key options. This way you'll be able to differentiate between the various instances of your browser and won't have to search for that particular tab. So let's talk about workspaces. Workspaces have been part of the Linux experience since the early days and are a great way to keep your work organized. As mentioned earlier in the video, while in the activities overview, the right hand side displays a visual representation of the available workspaces as well as what is in them. To select a different workspace, you can point and click with the mouse or use the page up, page down keys to scroll through the workspaces. You can also change workspaces without visiting the activities overview. Uh, simply press and hold the super key while toggling the page up, page down buttons and you'll scroll through the available workspaces. There's two main ways that I use workspaces. One instance is when I have an application running in the background and I want to get it out of my way. For example, let's say that from the command line I'm shredding the files on a USB. This process may take a while, so I'll run that on its own workspace. It's in the background and in the meantime I'll get other work done on another or several other workspaces. The other way I use workspaces is to organize reference material for my writing. Going to the activities overview, you can see that in my first or the upper workspace, I have LibreOffice running. In workspace two, I have two side-by-side -side windows of Firefox open 
Workspace 3 has another two instances of Firefox. Workspace 4 is running my dictionary, and Workspace 5 has my terminal running. Rather than try to tab through multiple Firefox tabs and looking for my dictionary, all that kind of stuff, what I can simply do is scroll through the workspaces. I find this much more efficient. Uh, now, my examples aren't the only ways to use workspaces. There's a tons of different ways that you can use them. Uh, you know, the sky's the limit. Use your imagination. Much of how you're going to use these is going to depend on what type of work you're doing. Using two or more monitors adds a new dimension to your workflow. Gnome Shell tends to treat each monitor as a separate workspace, sort of. So if I go to the activities overview, you get a separate overview for each monitor. But the secondary monitor doesn't have alternative workspaces. So when you change workspaces on the primary monitor, the secondary stays, the, stays in the same workspace. Depending on the type of work you do, this may or may not be an advantage. For myself, when I do my writing, I typically put my writing app on the secondary monitor and then use the primary monitor with its dynamic workspaces for my reference material. Now there is an extension that will give you the ability to switch workspaces on the non-primary monitor or monitors. It's called multi-monitor add-on. I've used it in the past. Personally, I really didn't find that the extension added anything to my workflow, so I've, I've quit using it, but you may find it useful depending on, uh, on your workflow. Well, that pretty much finishes up this video. As you can see, there is a bit of a learning curve to Gnome Shell, and 30 years of habits can be hard to break. But if you're like me, once you become accustomed to the workflow of Gnome Shell, using other desktop environments feels like a step backward. Now this isn't a knock on other DEs, it's just that I have found that for the type of work I do, Gnome Shell offers the tools for the most efficient workflow right out of the box. So as always, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And if you're a current subscriber, please share the video. Thanks again, and I hope to see everyone on my next video.